Uh, but uh, two protests took place in the European Parliament yesterday. One from Brexit Party MEPs who turned their backs uh, during uh, the um, paying of the anthem uh, Ode to Joy for the European Union. And uh, also demonstrations by Liberal Democrat MEPs who wore rather garish yellow, their own colours, T-shirts with Stop Brexit on the front and on the back a slogan from their European uh, elections where, which I can't actually repeat on air, it begins with B and ends in Ox. Uh, but I can't say it, but they wore that to the European Parliament. Both sides very much criticised uh, for uh, childish uh, student-style demonstrations. But why did they do it? Well, earlier we spoke to the Brexit Party MEP, uh, uh, Lance Foreman, who took part in his demonstration. Let's now talk to Liberal Democrat MEP Caroline Voden. Good morning to you, Caroline. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I say lots of criticism from all sides of both parties for taking part in these demonstrations. Is there not a requirement in the European Parliament, as there is in the House of Commons, for people to turn up dressed appropriately and respectfully uh, for being representatives of your nation state? Well, it's not the first time that people have worn T-shirts in the European Parliament um, for to you know to publicise some cause or another. And, and the reason we did it was because the sixteen of us were elected on a manifesto. Um, which had that slogan on its cover. We were elected on a manifesto to stop Brexit. And, and we, we walked into the Parliament yesterday to the you know, applause and smiles and support of colleagues from right across Europe um, to, to visibly get our message across that we're, we're in this Parliament, we want to contribute to it, and, and we want to stay. And you know, I think the photos that have played out across the media and online, um, not only in the UK, but right across Europe um, in the last 24 hours, shows that, that we got our message across. Well, and, but and didn't people no already know that? Way to do that? Didn't people already know your stance on Brexit? Well, they do, but it's... it's so you didn't need to publicise you know, it then? We're here to, to represent the manifesto we were elected on, and that's what we decided to do. Um, Brexit hasn't happened yet. You know, we've been arguing about it for three years. Our government has been completely about it for three years, and it's time it stopped. And, and that's, what, that's what we want to do. And, and so, wait, wait, so you, say, you say you, an hold on a minute, Caroline. Caroline, you say it's time it stopped. I mean, you say we've been arguing about it. Well, actually, people who voted Leave haven't been arguing about it. We just wanted to get on with it. People who don't accept I the outcome of an EU referendum yeah, have been people, arguing about it. The people, the people who voted to Leave are still arguing about what kind of Leave they want, and they've been arguing about it for three years. Even the, you know, the Conservative Party can't agree. They can't agree with the Brexit Party. Half of them have left and joined the Brexit Party. You know, none of them can agree. They don't know what Brexit means. They don't know what it is. They never did. What it's does felt what like does, clearly how Brexit would happen? What does remain? mean though because if you, I can't annoyingly again the fact you've got a slogan I genuinely am I'm so appalled that you have the slogan the B word to Brexit if I can't say it out on air and I wouldn't want my 12 year old to see it then I don't think it should be a party political slogan of a serious party and I do think the Liberal Democrats are a serious party uh, and I think I think frankly it, it's demeaning for you to have such a slogan uh, but what does remain mean we're, we're constantly told we don't know what leaving means but with the appointments of these new arch federalists in the EU we're told you know remains about remain and reform and and we you know it's this this is a you know this democratic body and oh, oh, oh the world's a better place with it we've just seen a massive stitch up in the back you know back corridors uh, of the european commission to appoint a bunch of people one of whom's got a criminal conviction uh, for corruption uh, to one of the senior posts in the european union uh, they're moving towards a, a federalist state an eu army what does remain mean to you and do you think it means the same to all remain voters there's absolutely no discussion of an EU army where I'm sitting. And what I would... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, I'm ever so sorry. The brand new commission president wants an EU army. Uh, it's been previously stated by numerous senior figures in the European Union. You may not be listening to those conversations, but they are absolutely happening. And none of that will happen unless there is the agreement of 28 countries. And I can assure you that there will not be the agreement of 28 countries. But what I've been doing for the last three weeks is sitting in Brussels in meetings of the Liberal group of 108 Liberals who represent countries from right across Europe. And we've been looking at the, a plan for legislation for the next five years, which includes some very serious reforms. And we are taking this seriously. We've been elected to do a job and we're coming here to do a job with our European colleagues. And that includes serious democratic reform of the European Union, because all of the MEPs here know that it does need reform. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a body that has grown and changed over many, many years. It has far more members now. And it does need to change. When was the that. last time there was a reform? When was the last time there was a democ serious democratic reform, as you called it, of the European Union? Can you, can you name one? 
No, because I've only been elected for four weeks. No, but so, well, I'm, I'm, assu- I, I'm assuming when you campaigned to be an MEP, you knew something about the European Union. It's a body you I want our country to continue Union. to be a part of and you want to reform parts of it. I'm assuming you can name the last serious democratic reform of the EU that took place. There are changes and reforms going on all the time. So name one. This is, this is a parliament. Name one. A parliament that is name a one. Compromise. And you talk about a stitch-up backroom deal. What I would say is that what the European Parliament does, which the UK Parliament does not do, is it reaches compromise. And we're talking about politicians from north and south, east and west, right and left, men and women, who have political and geographical dis- differences. And we come together and we, and we talk and talk and talk until we reach a compromise. And a compromise deal is, is maybe not what person A or person B would ideally like in an ideal world, but it... But it it moves forward. OK, than the but Caroline, can we, can we just we establish can we just establish that you can't name any democratic reform of the EU in recent years, even though we've been talking about how we need democratic reform of the EU for, I don't know, about 10 years now. You can't name one. Can I just clarify that? Well, you the, can't. The most, the most important democratic reform we're talking about now is initiating legislation from the parliament. Yes, which, which you can't currently do because you have no powers as MEPs, yeah. In the next five years, that will change. And we do have powers. Of course we have powers. I mean, You get to rubber stamp. You can rubber stamp no, legislation. You can't not, introduce any. It's not true. It's not That is true. true. Legislation... You can't is introduce any legislation, legislation in the European yeah, Parliament. Yeah, That's a fact. Would, would you stop interrupting me and let me... Actually, finish. you interrupted me, actually, but carry on. Legislation is proposed by the Commission in exactly the same way that our civil service proposes legislation Our civil home. service doesn't propose legislation. That, that is not... Caroline, you don't even know how our Parliament works, let alone the European Parliament, with all due respect. The legislation that is proposed by the European Commission does not go into law until every country has until the MEPs have looked at it and the Council have looked at it, which means that every country in the European Union has to agree before those laws go into place. So it's not a... Uh, though, that's it's OK. Car- Caroline, I hate to tell you, but the, the, the civil service in this country doesn't propose legislation. Uh, an elected government proposes legislation. And also, backbench MPs can propose legislation. It can get through. It doesn't happen very often, but it does actually happen. And I, I hate to tell you, but the European Commission often makes agreements on things which are unqualified majority voting. And so, therefore, uh, countries don't have a power veto of a huge, huge swathe of policy. I'm ever so sorry that I, as a political journalist and a broadcaster, am having to educate a newly elected MEP about how the European Union and the Parliament actually works. But there we are. One final question to you. You think that your demonstration, your protest yesterday was justified wearing those rude T-shirts in European Parliament. Um, You wouldn't have been allowed into the House of Commons wearing something like that because it would have been seen as disrespectful to democracy, including the fact fact that your message was really disrespectful to 52% of the population. What did you think of the Brexit Party's demonstration? when they turned their backs uh, on the uh, when the Ode to Joy anthem was played. Did you think that was acceptable as well? Because that was the manifesto they were elected on in the same way that was the manifesto you were elected on. I thought it was absolutely disgusting and childish, <laughs> childish and disrespectful. Look, I have to say, you know, I thought it was... No, no, Karen, I thought it... I didn't say... I wouldn't think disgusting. I definitely thought childish. Definitely thought it was inappropriate. I would not have taken part in such a demonstration, even though I'm a Brexiteer. But why was their protest disgusting? But you wearing a rude word on a T-shirt, saying mm, rude words to basically 52% of the population of this country, why was your protest not disgusting? Because what they were doing was turning their back on, on an anthem, you know, being played by young amateur musicians in the chamber. They were disre- disrespecting a parliament to which they have been elected democratically. They say it's democratic, but they're elected in an election. You don't get much more democratic than that. And, you know, yet they hypocritically will come here and take their salaries and all their expenses to a parliament that they don't respect. I mean, how... Why, why is it hypocritical for them to take... If they're doing the job, why is it hypocritical? I mean, they're not have doing you, a job. Aren't they? Oh, you're job. not doing a job either. They turn up, they, they sit down, they turn their backs and they go home. Well, they, they, well they, to, to, be fair, to be fair, you turned up, sat down and, and, then, and then you got to go away. You, you still got paid for doing what you did yesterday, wearing a, wearing a stupid, um, embarrassing T-shirt. I had a 15-hour day yesterday and was still in a meeting at 11 o'clock at night. I shouldn't imagine any of the Brexit party were doing that. Maybe not, but we, um, can I ask? No, can well, I, can exactly. I, can I ask you? Have you job. have you also questioned why SNP MPs in the House of Commons are taking their salaries, given that they don't think that there should be Scottish MPs in the House of Commons in Westminster? Have you questioned their right to take their salaries? Well, I think I think if you look Is that at relevant, the relevant, I think the SNP actually take Westminster quite seriously. But what Sinn Fein do is Sinn Fein don't respect our Parliament and don't believe that 
you know, they, they are elected to our parliament, but they don't take their seats and they don't take their salaries. And I think the Brexit party should do the but same. But isn't the whole case. point of Brexit party that they do they do go to parliament because they want to try and disrupt and want to try and push us out of the EU, of the policy, which last time I heard was actually was the official policy of the, the government of this country and in the and manifestos of the majority of parties voted for at the last general election? Isn't that just a total embarrassment that we've got 28, 29 people here who are behaving like that? But, but that's a, I'm very happy. No, no, but I'm very, I'm perfectly happy. And I think lots of people, Caroline, would share your criticism of what the Brexit Party MEPs did yesterday. I didn't, I tweeted about it. I did, it's not something I would have done. I, I thought it was childish. I thought it was embarrassing. Uh, but I thought what your party did was equally childish and embarrassing. And I find it interesting that you think that what you did was, 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 a, was a totally justified demonstration and what the Brexit Party did was absolutely disgusting, in your words. Do you not see that both demonstrations actually embarrassed our country and embarrassed our politics? I don't believe that wearing a T-shirt that said stop, stop Brexit... That's not what it said on the back, though, though is it? We were, but, but, you know, if the photos were taken from the front... From the but front there were plenty of anyway, photos listen, taken from the back. To, Julia... I'm supposed to be in the chamber voting for our new president, so I'm really going to have to go. Because OK, well, I, try, I, try and wear something that looks makes you look like a grown-up today. That's what I, what I would suggest. And I would say to the MEPs on the Brexit party, you know, try to behave appropriately. Can we, you're representing our country. Can everyone just try and behave? I don't think that I have been as embarrassed about anything as I have been today about those idiots in the European Parliament. First of all, whether you agree with Brexit or not is irrelevant. doesn't matter at all. But what you don't do, in my opinion, is like children behaving in a spoilt manner turn your back on something because you think you're making a point. And I'm sorry that my good friend Nigel Farage felt he had to do it. But I was disgusted. It was incredibly rude... And it made this country look ridiculous. And can I also say that I have got no time for people who are thick and stupid. And the Liberal Democrats wearing ridiculous yellow T-shirts with the phrase bollocks to Brexit written across the front, you just made yourselves ridiculous. I doubt that anybody will ever vote for you again. That is the most disgusting, despicable thing I have seen. You and the Brexit Party behaving like spoilt brats in the European Parliament. And I say again, I'm not bothered about Brexit one way or the other over this. What I am concerned about is the ridiculous way you have made this country look your idiots, all of you. This is a proud nation with a proud heritage, with a proud past, mainly. And you have made us look stupid. You're in that parliament earning over £100,000 a year and you behave like cretinous morons. Liberal Democrats and the Brexit department, the Brexit flipping party, whatever you are, you are horrible, horrible, horrible people who could do that. And if there is one person who can defend their actions listening to this programme tonight, I would like to hear you. I will give you five minutes of uninterrupted airtime to tell me why you think making this great British nation of ours a laughing stock around the world, because mark my words, that's what you have done. If you can make me realise there was some method in your madness... I will get down on my knees and apologise. But I'm safe in the knowledge that you can't. You wear a yellow T-shirt with an offensive word on the front of it and you think you are political statesmen and women? And the other lot, and quite frankly, you dress remarkably ugly from the back anyway. You stand up and you turn your back during a piece of music that people are listening to, in, whether you agree with it or not, 
in a time when people are trying to get together, you make us look stupid. I'm almost embarrassed to say I am British at the moment because of you cretinous yobbos. You liberal democrat lily-livered idiots and you Brexit party buffoons should be given the bums rush out of the European Parliament. I'm now going to give you the number slowly because I suppose supporters of this are a bit dim. So you get the number and you ring me. You ring me and tell me why I shouldn't be embarrassed about what you people have done to this nation. In fact, I will ask my, my very good friend, Mr Ash, over here to slowly give you the number. Yeah, I don't think you're in any state to give out the number. I've never seen him like this. It's in inconsolable. The number is 0344-499-1000. Thank you. I am feeling inconsolable, you're right. Uh, they've embarrassed, embarrassed us in front of the world, is that you? What would you have had them do instead as their protest? Well, they don't need to protest. They're there until we leave the European Union. They are moronic. Absolutely moronic. I mean, what would these members of the Brexit Party, who are so British and so proud of our heritage, what would they do if another nation turned their back on our national anthem? What would they do? They would be on the phone to me, complaining like mad. You know, I kind of expect members of the Brexit Party... And those, is, is there any UKIP members left? I don't know. I expect you all to behave fairly, because, you know, let's face it, Brexit or UKIP, it's Nigel. And I think, Nigel, you shouldn't have got them to do that, but we can discuss it, although he's not available tonight to talk about it because he's probably embarrassed about what happened, and I don't blame him. But, and it's a big but, I thought the Liberal Democrats had more about them. I thought... The Liberal Democrats were reasonably intelligent, not quite the left-wing lovies that I have come to detest quite a lot. Mm. But no, you have let me down as well. You stand there, resplendent or not, in your yellow T-shirts. And I'm just going to say the phrase again, so if you're offended, shut your ears. These people, adult people who've been elected as representatives of the European Parliament that we are about to leave, hopefully, on good terms, but it looks as if it's getting worse and worse. You stand there with a T-shirt, faced, knowing you will be seen around the world by the news channels of the world with the words, bollocks to Brexit. And you stand there, smugly, looking as if you've done something brilliant. You have embarrassed this nation. You have made a laughing stock of the United Kingdom. Zero, three, four, 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 nine, nine, one thousand is the number for you people to ring tonight. If you're supporters of the Brexit party, you are partly culpable too. Unless you ring and apologise to the nation for what you have done. Do you agree? Well, I, don't, I mean, I don't respect the parliament, do they? No it's, respect. It's, it's, it's a, they're trying to make it with a national anthem like it's, it's a federal, you know, it's an actual, making it into a country, aren't they? You Liberal Democrats should be ashamed of yourselves. Well, yeah, they should be, yeah. That is disgusting. As is turning your back. Brexit Party MEPs were accused of behaving, well, like uh, some said rowdy footballers, others say uh, students uh, in sort of sixth form politics when they turned their backs when they heard this. Ode to Joy, a beautiful piece of music ruined by the fact that he's the official European Union anthem. Why a 
union of bo uh, countries that's supposed to just be an economic body should have its own anthem, you might question. And it's something that Nigel Farage, the leader of the Brexit party, has questioned this idea of moving to a federalist super state. That is why they turned their backs. But should they have? Well, let's talk to Lance Foreman, who's a Brexit party MEP for London and one of those who did uh, turn his back yesterday. Good morning to you. Good morning to you, Julia. Good morning. Um, why did you guys take the decision to turn your backs? A youth orchestra playing, a lovely singer, a very, you know, very, very staid occasion. Quite, why did you do it? Well, so, look, to, to be honest, you, you, you sort of can't win with this thing because if people that, you know, stood up and sung along, they'd accuse us of going native. So, um, you know, we, we reject the EU and this anthem, you know, this anthem is, you know, it was originally proposed as part of the constitution of the EU, which was rejected. Uh, when the Lisbon Treaty came along three years later, they didn't even mention that there was going to be an anthem. They, you know, nobody has actually approved the EU having an anthem. And I think the thing that really got to us was when the president of the parliament uh, yesterday said that this is the um, the anthem of the European nation. And we're all thinking, hang on a second, there is no European nation. And it's, it's this creeping federalism that we, obviously, as the Brexit Party, reject on behalf of the 17.4 million people of Britain that have rejected it. You know, this, you know, people are getting very hung up about this anthem, but quite honestly, we did it in you know, the most dignified way we could. When, when, when we sat down when the anthem started, there were many MEPs actually across the, um, you know, the, the parliament that stayed seated. And it was only when we were asked to stand up, some didn't, but we, we did stand up, but we just thought, let's, let, you know, let's just... Who, who asked you, so, so a number of, we know there are other there are MEPs from other countries, other political parties who, who just chose not to stand. Who told you to stand up? Uh, the, the president of the parliament said it's disrespectful um, to stay seated during the anthem of the nation. He said something like the nation of Europe. And uh, I think we just at that point, we thought, OK, well, let's stand up. So it, just, it, know, it wasn't it up. wasn't something that had been planned. It was a spur of the moment uh, protest. That, that sounds a bit unlikely to me. No, we, we decided beforehand that we weren't going to stand for the um, for, for the anthem. And you know what? Straight after the anthem, you know, and this explains, you know, how we feel about the parliament. Immediately after that whole anthem incident was over, the first thing that happened was that an MEP stood up and asked a question about why three elected, recently elected MEPs from Catalonia were not being allowed into the chamber. OK, they were just being refused access, even though they were democratically elected. They asked this question. It went to the president. What did the president do? He just didn't he didn't respond to the question at all he completely just rejected it and moved on to the next thing it was just the most bizarre undemocratic thing i mean you, you know you wouldn't get that in a westminster parliament at least you know whether you like the answer or not there is an answer but there was just no answer he just it was as though the question never existed it was bizarre so you you felt it was it was an appropriate response and the criticisms that is a bit student politics and uh, an, an unnecessary a bit rude to the the, the the youth orchestra who were playing you you're you're you're, you're just saying that's not the case well, not really. I mean, look, it's, uh, as I said, it's a great piece of music. The orchestra played it very beautifully. Um, we, we tried, you know, we, we're trying to show that we are, you know, we are there. We're in the chamber, but, you know, we, we don't accept the EU. And, you know, the, the people of Britain have rejected it. And this was a very dignified, quite a peaceful and, you know, fairly harmless uh, 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 way of dealing with it. And, you know, it's... Uh, you can read, you know, you read into it, you know. Well, it's interesting. Like, so. I mean, there's been a lot of criticism of the Liberal Democrats as well. I see we're going to talk to one of the Lib Dem uh, MEPs a little bit later in the show who took part in this demonstration. They turned up wearing bright yellow T-shirts, the Lib Dem colours, of course, on the front, stop Brexit, yeah. on the back, yeah. a word I can't even say out loud due to Ofcom rules, uh, B word, yeah. uh, uh, ending yeah. an ox, uh, uh, to, yeah. uh, to Brexit. Um, <laughs> a lot of people it were critical of that as well, but they didn't seem to find it as offensive as... Well, as well, well, let, me, let me finish, Lance, let me finish. Yeah. But, but what I thought was interesting again um, the fact that it's it's language that we can't even you know you can't most most tv companies might question showing it certainly we can't put it out on air uh, here on yeah. uk radio yeah. um and, and it seemed to me certainly you wouldn't be allowed you would be barred from entering the commons chamber in the house of commons or indeed the lords if you wore something like that you're required to dress in a respectful sort of sober manner you know men are actually required to wear suits sorry a, a jacket and a tie it's actually one of the rules of the house of commons to this day um but yeah. um are you are you are you surprised i imagine not that the the reaction has been negative to both you and the Lib Dem party, but that most of the criticism has been against the Brexit party for what they did rather than the Lib Dems. Well, 
well, why, why does that not surprise? <laughs> yeah, that's that's just uh, that's just the way things go. But it, well, you know, if you if you go onto uh, Google and you search EU Parliament dress code, whilst there is no official dress code, you know, they do actually state that when you're close to power, that you should dress respectfully. And uh, you know, there's no way that people would have been you know allowed into say Westminster with bright yellow t-shirts with that slogan. It was just you know, I think. Very rude, um, and, and and not only rude to you know and disrespectful to, to this parliament, so be it. But but to the 17.4 million people, what they're actually saying is you know that same word to 17.4 million people and to democracy. You know they, they you know they can't they just cannot accept it, and we have to move on. You know we're in dangerous times. If we can't accept democracy, we just uh, you know it's it's you know it's just very dangerous. Not only for Britain, for Europe, for Europe too. We've got well, to the on. the European Parliament, you do get to have a say in terms of uh, who the next uh, European Parliament president is, but not a say other than a, a sort of a, a rubber stamping yeah, exercise yeah, when yeah, it comes to yeah. the other three appointees. We've seen uh, the new replacements for Donald Tusk and John. And, and, uh, uh, Jean-Claude Juncker and also the new European Central Bank president. What do you make of those appointees? All arch-federalists, all critical of Brexit, all, I mean, certainly the, the new uh, the new Jean-Claude Juncker, uh, Ursula von der Leyen, uh, she's in favour of an EU army. Um, is, this, uh, is this a gift to Brexiteers that uh, the EU has, you know, doubled down to all intents and purposes? Well, it's, an, it's a, you know, it's another example, yes, of them doubling down, but also the, the, the complete sort of fatuousness of the, the parliament. You know, the... MEPs don't get a choice, you know, you're basically presented with this sort of candidate all been stitched up in the council and, you know, you basically vote yes or no, but that's it. And everybody, of course, you know, most of the MEPs love the EU and uh, they'll be voting for whatever the, the, the council recommends. And, and, and you know, the, every day we're here, we're learning more about it. You know, if, if you want to, if you want to actually make a case in Parliament, you, you get to speak for one minute. You know, we were told yesterday, if you go over 10 seconds, no one's going to hear it because they turn the mics off. <laughs> the whole thing is, it's just, it's a joke. It, um, you know, one it, final it's question. Not a serious parliament. There's quite a lot of uh, criticism of the, the 29 Brexit uh, MEPs yeah. uh, taking their salaries. I know Richard Tice, the uh, chair of the party, is donating his to charity. Uh, but um, other people, of course, you know, it, you have to turn up there. It is a job. Uh, you're, you're taking your salary from an organisation you don't think should exist. Some people are calling that hypocrisy. What do you say to that? Well, look, I'm still, I'm taking a, a huge amount of time out of my business. To, to fight for something that I believe very passionately in. And, you know, if, if we as the Brexit Party MEPs can do a bit to help save the country, not only £39 billion as a one-off payment, but a net £13 billion every year, I think we'll, we will be the best value public servants there have been in the history, history yeah, of public service. There is that. I suppose also, I'd, I'd, love, I'd love it if people ask the same questions of SNP uh, uh, MPs in the House of Commons, which no one ever seems Indeed. to do, because they don't think Indeed, that they, yeah. well, they should be allowed to sit in the Westminster Department because they should be completely independent, and yet they're still taking their wages there, I suppose. But people will have different views on both of those topics. Should we talk to Lavinia? Yeah. Make yeah. sense of it? Yeah. Yeah, Lavinia, hello. Good evening. You're on the air. Uh, Oh. Good evening, James, and also good evening, Ash. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Uh, before I go any further, um, I've, I've been actually listening to you for an hour, and actually what you've uh, been actually talking about, um, the, um, the Liberals, I uh, uh, totally, 100% back you in every way. You are totally right. They are a disgrace. If anything, we need somebody, because actually what you said about our country, um, you know, I also want to say this that nobody has said. We are a courageous country, a courageous, yeah? Mm. And what you said, totally, totally back you, all right? Because I feel actually they let us down, totally. And also, uh, can I also say this, James? Yes, you may. It, is that uh, they're worried about mental health. You know, I mean, I've been hearing about they're worried about their mental health mm. issues and everything. And obviously, I do not uh, condone uh, people uh, uh, when they uh, uh, get on the internet and they sort of uh, threaten this, you know, the MPs, because uh, uh, that is not right. But if I was an MP right now, I'd be very, very worried. And I'll tell you why I would be worried, mm. because I believe... You know, uh, uh, most of them actually do a good job. But I feel in my heart, uh, James, mm. it's not enough. What we need is there's somebody out there 
uh, to go the extra mile. Does that make sense? And that hasn't happened for years. And the only person that done that was Margaret Thatcher, who I adored. And that's what we need, somebody to go the extra mile and say enough is enough. Is and enough. Exactly, James. Thank you, Lavinia. I don't think I could have put that better myself, could I? What's going on? Well, most of the day, that's exactly what we've been doing. There was a very brief session this morning that was suspended because we hadn't been told by the commission who we could vote for. Um, so we ended up only being in the chamber for 20 minutes. That We were uh, told to stand up for a country's anthem. Our objection was that the EU is not a country. If it is a country, it has no people, no voters, and certainly no democracy. Who said it was a country's anthem, though? It's just an anthem, uh, isn't it? It's an EU anthem. It, that was how it was referred to today within the chamber. They said our country's anthem? Yep. So you, on that basis, I mean, because this pro it was done before by the UKIPers, which is kind of like the previous incarnation of you guys, isn't it? They, they, no, not at all. I was never part of UKIP, and I never would have been. No, I appreciate that, but I mean, they, they previously carried out, they, they were the rebellious anti-EU party who'd done a similar thing by turning their backs in the Parliament chamber. They had, but I think uh, changing the entire legal status of the EU um, from a collection of nation states into a nation state itself was fundamentally insulting to all the voters who have only just put us there, despite the fact we should have left on the 29th of March. But, do you, but of course, the process is ongoing, as you were aware, and you're you know, one of the few sort of extraordinary situations that your party are, are hoping you will be out of a job in the coming months. But nonetheless, lots of people looked at that and thought, hang on, you, know, you happen to be... I know that you're a very well brought up person <laughs> and you, you know you come from nice stock and p's and q's and be thankful and you know be polite to people so turning your back when people are performing it was a protest at the idea it was a country uh, unfortunately um, whilst i have no shame about having done that i think it is perfectly fair to stand up uh, and make your point clear on behalf of the british people who voted for me so that we could leave uh, but my daughter won't be able to watch it because of the Liberal Democrat faction. Well, let's speak to Phil Bennion on this point. Uh, Liberal Democrat MEP for the West Midlands. Again, just next door. Phil Bennion, good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon. And well, what's going on with you guys? You've got the Brexit party turning their back and you lot swearing like troopers. What's happening? <laughs> well, I think we probably have lost a bit of decorum, but uh, I think sometimes politics uh, could do with a little bit of lightening up. Um, I have to say, originally, I, w I was a bit of a sceptic about uh, these yellow T-shirts. But uh, in retrospect, you know, I think even the colour, it brought a lot of colour to the, the Parliament. It, and uh, it, w it was very visible. It, visibly, it really worked. And I think it worked better than we expected to. But, but the problem with that is that, you know, the, the minute you... Uh, OK, it's the B word and it rhymes with... Yeah, well, that, we, we know, know, we know, know, we know the, one, the sort of pendulous reference. Can we put yes, it that so way? That's the one. That's one, yes. Uh, but of course, you know, if the minute you put that on there, I notice lots of news channels bleeping it out. I notice yes. it's been pixelated yeah. out on. So, do you kind of lose the dressing room a little bit there? And your 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 Brexit yeah. party colleague, um, Anunziata, saying, you know, her daughter can't watch this now because you guys were swearing. Is it, well, we were told it's it like Jim Davidson said, had showed we, up in the chamber. Yeah. For we were told it wasn't a watershed word, but uh, we're, we're, not, we're not absolutely certain about that. But having uh, the stop Brexit on the front was, was basically the, the, the key message. And uh, that was what was facing the, uh, the chair in the parliament. Uh, that's what most people could see was, yeah. was simply the stop Brexit word and on the photographs too. Did, did you not at any point think, uh, OK, we're wearing these T-shirts, we're making a protest. I noticed various sort of dignitaries and bigwigs from uh, the EU Parliament sort of came down really in sympathy with the message you had there. Was there any point, Phil Bennion, when you thought, ah, there's a little matter of 17.2 or 3 million people that kind of voted for the very opposite of what oh. we're advocating here? Well, yes, but they're, they're well represented in the Parliament by Nunziata and her colleagues. And... Uh, uh, the 16 point whatever it was million who voted to uh, to remain are, are well represented by the Liberal Democrats. Uh, Ziata, I, you, you, I think this is... 
So there's <laughs> harmony here between you two. You'll be forming your own party between you if it goes on like this. There's, there's, there's clearly some sort of uh, recognition of both of your individual positions on this. I mean, do you understand what Phil is saying there? You know, they're, they're, the Lib Dems are there as a pro-European group and they're as entitled to say B to Brexit as you are to turn your back on an orchestra. I think there is a great difference, that we had a referendum in 2016, and as with all democratic votes, only one winner can come out of that and leave one. And our Remain Parliament did not enact the will of the people. Instead, it pitched the politicians against the people, undermining our entire democratic uh, system that historically has served our country extremely well. I think that is shameful on the politicians in Westminster, and that's what we've got to change. But whilst we are here, our job in the European Parliament is to ensure that we leave as quickly, but also as smoothly as possible. It's our job to actually build bridges, and uh, I think we can do that in a number of ways. We've got um, the next few months to make sure that we do get on with our counterparts across the EU, many of whom also didn't stand up for that anthem, for similar reasons to us. Uh, it's why we were so instructed to, because so many people hadn't stood up. Uh, and that it's not true that the whole of Europe believes in a federal project, as the Lib Dems do, and it's certainly not never, true. Never, uh, 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 sorry, we don't. <laughs> Go on, Phil, what were you going to say? No, no, we don't. We don't believe in this federal project uh, in the in the way that we're painted. To, we we perfectly uh, believe that we should be working together um, in the way that uh, the European Union can allow us to. Uh, but I really want to go back to the uh, the prospectus that now the the Leave um, the Leave campaign, the Leave movement uh, is proposing. We've moved away from the situation in 2016 when we were we're being offered full access to the single market, full access to, to European markets without any problems whatsoever. That was, the, that was what we were sold in 2016. Now the, Leave, now the Leave movement is saying it's going to be a hard Brexit, so uh, the perspective that was from the Leave cute. movement has changed. This is, yeah, this is why it's legitimate I'll bring you back in in just a second. Phil, go on, just finish your point. Yeah, I'm and saying we'll this, is, this is why it's legitimate to ask the people again, because the form of Brexit they are being offered now is very different than the form of Brexit they were being offered in 2016. Aaron Ziata, Reese mogg can you respond to that? The, the vote in... 2016 was never enacted. Our politicians never even tried to. But we did just have a vote five weeks ago. And the Brexit Party topped that poll with more than 50% of votes above any other party. We were standing on a no-deal platform. I think it's quite clear who the winners were. Uh, well, actually, if you had to add up uh, our votes, the Green votes and the, uh, and the, the, the UK votes, um, even those without the Conservative and Labour votes that were for, for, uh, for Remain, uh, outnumbered the, 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 um, the Brexit votes. Um, if you actually look well, at if it, you we, want to join we got forces, over one million please feel free to. Hard Remain votes actually more win that election. Than, the, the, than, than, uh, than the Brexit party got. <clears throat> so, so you're redefining, you're kind of crunching the numbers in a more advantageous way, Phil, to suit your current position. Well, yes, yes, I don't, yes, I don't say that to be... I, I don't, exactly the same. Well, I, but is she not? <laughs> I'm I just mean, taking my own party. We came top of the biggest okay. party. Well, yes, they got, the most, uh, they got the most seats and, and the most yeah. votes in, on a party by party by party But is that not... I mean, I'm, I'm not... We had I'm not, a large Phil. number of... We had three parties okay. that were absolutely uh, against... Uh, against, against but Phil, Brexit, Phil... So, Whatever the reality, whatever the positions of both of you here is, I mean, the reality is that the Brexit Party has 29 MEPs, yeah. and you guys have how many is it, Phil? Well, we've got 16 plus one, we say, because okay. we're obviously we're the, the, the so alliance they, of, of Northern Ireland. Right. Are, are so they've, they've kind of got double, they, they the, double the amount of people voted in favour. No, of no, that they party. haven't got double. Uh, and, uh, not the case. Not the case. And also. The <laughs> Well, yeah. it's, it's not far. It's it's just a shade off double. If you want to look at and it that the way, did very well. And the might be fifty-two, forty-eight. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it um, might be.
but but Phil, uh, so when you wear your vest with the uh, B to Brexit the main thing on, contradiction can outnumber the, okay. the Brexit party. So there's not a part of you, Phil, when you wore your T-shirt today, and I, I noticed you look very dapper in it. I have to say, uh, <laughs> but did you not think about that a little bit and thought, okay, we are in the minority here, both as a party and in the position of Brexit uh, itself? In the as a party, we are not the fifty percent, obviously, but in terms of the the the, the vote that the the recent European election. The, uh, the, the the total Remain votes outnumbered the total Brexit. All right. Uh, and in Seattle, Rhys Mogg, I'll give you a final word on this. You heard what uh, Phil Bennion just said, that uh, despite, despite how seductive it looks on the face of it, i.e. you won, that in fact counts for very little because if you add up all the sum of the other parties, then... Uh, I think he expresses the real failure of our politicians in the UK to accept the will of the people, to trust the people with the successful future our country can have by undermining how they vote, ignoring the results of elections. They show how little respect they have for the people who put them there. That's what's got okay. to change.